from the College by the Lake, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Local, regional, national, and international guests discussing the issues and topics affecting the way you live are on Forum, the North Idaho College Public Forum, with your host and moderator, political scientist, Tony Stewart. Our topic today uh, is swimming, but particularly all the training that goes into tryouts for uh, competition, and particularly we would like to address uh, what all that entails for qualifying for the Olympics. Uh, Americans have been really well known for their swimming and competition worldwide and have been very successful in the Olympics. And we're so pleased to have on our program today a young person and her coach that is really getting a lot of attention here in the Northwest because she at age 13 uh, is really doing well and is fa in fact at age 10 and age 11 she broke uh, the swimming records in her particular event in this, in this region and now she has qualified uh, for junior events at the national level. First of all, we welcome to the program her coach, Carolyn Kent, and Carolyn comes to us with uh, great credentials to discuss this subject. She holds a baccalaureate degree and a master's from the University of Southern California uh, and uh, in physical education and also uh, some other areas. She is a swimmer and has competed uh, regionally and nationally, and she too has had uh, record-breaking uh, events at ages 10, 11, and 12. Uh, Carolyn Kent lives here in North Idaho, and as I said, is not only the coach for our guest today, but for a number of other people. Carolyn, welcome to the program, and thank you for coming along with one of your uh, prize uh, students, and uh, we look forward to the program. Thank you. And I'm very pleased to welcome to the program uh, the young swimmer, Brooke Sprague, who is from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and at age 10, and again at age 11, she broke, uh, as I said, the regional records uh, in swimming for her particular event. And, uh, Brooke, we know that you have qualified for uh, national junior events, and we're suspicious that um, one day that you might uh, perform at the Olympics. And whether you do or not, you're doing wonderfully and, and bringing great treat to your sport. Uh, welcome to the program, and as we get into the program, even our viewers that stay tuned will get to see you swim uh, through some video that we have. And as always, I'm very pleased to have Janelle Burke, who is uh, regular panelists on this program, who is an attorney in the state of Idaho, and I shall ask Janelle to commence today's questioning. Well, Brooke, let's start with you today and ask you some questions about yourself. How old were you when you began to swim, and how did you get interested in swimming? Um, I was eight year old, years old when I began swimming, but it wasn't really by my choice. It was more by my parents' choice. They wanted me to get into some kind of activity, and I had tried ice skating, and I didn't really like that. And so they decided to put me into swimming. And so you went to swimming lessons, and, mm -hmm. and then from there, did you find that you excelled in them? Did you enjoy that aspect of it? Oh, I, I w thought it was okay. I went on to swim team, and I really didn't like that. When I was eight, I, I was still an average swimmer. It took me a long time before I got much better at the sport. So. And so then later on, as you began to develop, you started getting more into swim team, is, and that's usually where you do the competitive aspects of your swimming, is that right? Yes. So now how would you go about that? You, you would normally go to a meet? Uh-huh. And tell me a little bit about it. How is about a meet conducted? Meets? Uh -huh. Okay, um, meets generally last throughout the whole weekend, and the meets that are at the Inland Empire level um, the Inland Empire meets, there's usually about 500 people, I guess it is. Okay, swimmers. Yes, 500 about. swimmers, I mean. In different categories, of course. Mm -hmm, yes, in different age groups, and it's 8 and under, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on. And they go up to 18 years old. And then from that level, um, it progresses to the regional level, and there there's about 1,000 people, and the regional meets are usually held in Seattle for our region. And then after that, it's on to zones, which includes the 13 western states and western zones. And I've been to three different zones in Seattle, Hawaii, and California. And now I've um, reached the national level, and so I'm no longer eligible for zones. So just recently I went to Texas for junior nationals. 
Okay, we're going to want to ask you some more about that because that's a very special event. But I do want to ask your coach uh, to fill in here and kind of inform our viewers uh, what exactly is the the uh, governing body of the swimming. I know that in many sports there will be a governing association in order to to keep the competitiveness pure, I suppose you would say, to keep some kinds of rules and regulations about how you proceed through the process. So can you explain to us a little bit about how swimming is set up in the United States, how you eventually get to the Olympic level? Right. Nationally here it's United States Swimming. A long time ago it used to be called AAU, anyone that swam a long time ago, but now it's United States Swimming and they are the governing body. They set up the rules that regulate swimming. Um, and swimmers swim by their age and also by their ability level, which those levels are set up by U.S. swimming also. They have clear down to C levels in some divisions, B levels, A, double AA, A, triple A. In the Inland Empire, we're really a rather small association within United States swimming, and we just have B swimmers and A swimmers. So if a swimmer started swimming at age 13, the age of Brooke, they wouldn't compete against Brooke. They'd swim in the B division until they make time standards. And in U.S. swimming, everything is, is governed by time standards. And you swim with your age, but also with the time standard of where you qualify until you reach a certain point, like with Brooke. Um, she went through the sequence up to regionals, age group regionals, and that is also by ages, but they also have senior regionals, which Brooke made this year in six events, and once you reach that level, it doesn't matter what your age is. She competes in the women's division, and uh, they could be some, I think the youngest that I saw at senior regionals was a 12-year-old at senior regionals. There was even a 12-year-old at junior nationals. And yet, at senior regionals, there was a 35-year-old in Brooks' event. So if you can make the time standard, and those are all set up by U.S. swimming, then you compete with people swimming your same times. And can you kind of give us an idea who's in the Inland Empire? Although our show goes out to, of course, a much broader region than that, um, can you tell us who are the chapters or however they're set up it's within that? In northern the Idaho and... Uh, mainly eastern Washington. Here it's Coeur d'Alene. Uh, in, in northern Idaho there's Sandpoint, Coeur d'Alene, and Moscow. Then there's, there's Pullman, Spokane, uh, Wenatchee, Yakima, Ellensburg. Who have I forgotten? I'll have a fit if I forget. <laughs> um, but those, those are general right, chapters. Right. And, and uh, uh, then you go to a meet and, and you compete together, and that's the, that's the starting level. Yes, and we go to it. Brooke is, is a member of a team. We swim, our team is the Coeur d'Alene Stay Fit Challengers, and we swim out of the Stay Fit Athletic Club. So on our whole team, we have approximately 100 kids. And um, so. Again, there are different levels of meets. There are A and B meets um, that we will take most of our swimmers to. We try to go to one team effort meet a month, at least one a month. But with right within the Inland Empire, um, in the summer, there's one almost every weekend. And in the winter, there's probably at least two a month. Oh, that's that, great. So right within, uh, never traveling further than Wenatchee, we can go to meets almost every weekend. <laughs> Keeps us all very busy. But we usually, as a team, we always try to go to at least one team effort meet a month. Carolyn, I have a few questions to you about uh, how Brooke and others get to her level. First of all, am I correct that when you're looking at different sports and when you pre start performing at the Olympic level or in others, uh, the professional sports, if we're talking about basketball or football and other sports, you cannot make it at 10, 14, or 15, <laughs> but in gymnastic and swimming and all, what makes it uh, so different that at a much younger age that you can compete with people who have been at it much longer? Well, in swimming, um, now ironically the trend is a little bit older. When I was young in swimming it wasn't uncommon at all to see 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds at the Olympics. Um, and by the time they were 16 or 17, they were done. I think a lot of that is because they, especially the girls, they didn't have college programs. Now that they have college programs, uh, in swimming you're seeing them a little bit older, but, but still someone very young, I mean the youngest we've had in a few years was Anita Nall at 14, 
and making the Olympic team. Um, but swimming is, is very intense. I do think that uh, the tendency a lot of times is to start kids young because it's a skill coordination-wise that they can do early. Someone at eight can coordination-wise swim and a lot of times, uh, like Brooke said, her parents started, her parents will start a child early and it's a very difficult sport. You spend hours and hours and hours in the pool and a lot of times by, by 14 they're just tired of it and a child at that point will say, no, where, where really strength-wise they do do better if they, you can keep it a little lower level till they get to be 13, 14, where their strength uh, is greater and, and they can definitely be faster at that age up to a point again than when you hit 25 for a woman or, uh, you know, the, and the United States has come a long ways in providing financial assistance so people can. It used to be that just financially when you were 21 and out of college you had to be out making a living and, and you couldn't spend the time that it took. Something else that you're saying here too that just really dawned on me that when you're swimming in, in, in certain types of meets and all, as you said, time is the key to the whole process and a certain age or, or weight and height and so forth would be a factor. But if you're dealing with uh, diving, then it switches from um, time to uh, certain um, difficulty and performance. And that's why I, I would suspect that divers can uh, perform at, to, at an older age than those who are swimming for time, is that correct? Well, I don't know that I would make that specification. I mean, uh, there was a diver at the last Olympics that was, what, 12 or 13, oh. very young, mm -hmm. and doing incredible things. And like you say, the gymnasts, I, I just think that a lot of it is the time commitment it takes mm -hmm. to excel in those sports that at 12, if that's what you're choosing to do, other than going to school, and sometimes they even put them in private programs, what else? What are the commitments in your life do you have where if you get to be 21 or 22, you usually have to provide a little bit for yourself. And so that was very difficult. Like I say, swimming now, it's better. And people can continue swimming. So you see, I mean, Janet Evans is still swimming. And even though, yes, she made it young too, uh, she's got a lot of drive and a lot of determination to have kept it up over the number of years she has. But she's still the, the top in the world now. So age-wise, I do see. think in swimming they can get better yeah. for much older than we often see. I suspect also swimming is such an outstanding sport that doesn't do certain injuries of the body that something like football would. Uh, Brooke, I have one question for you and then we'll go back to Janelle. Uh, a lot of our young people who are watching might be interested in swimming and Carolyn has already referred to the fact that it's not you go swim for 30 minutes and just how fun, it's really discipline. Mm -hmm. Give us an idea both when school is going on in the summer, what kind of uh, uh, time you put into training and what kind of demand that it is upon you? Oh, it's, it's a great demand mentally and physically to, you know, get up every day. To say in the summer I get up, I'm going to have to be getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning this summer. And that's just, it's really hard to stick with it and say, you know, this is important. And I think when you're younger you really need to s just stick with it because you know, it really is rewarding when you go to a meet like mm. Zone, say, and you know, you or win. Or Nationals. <laughs> or Nationals, yes, and you do well, it just, it all pays off, and so. So you get up at four, and you, you get out there, and you're you really asleep at that time, and how long do you, uh, at that particular morning session, how long do you work out? Um, this summer I'll be working out from five o'clock until 8.30. I'm going to be driving to Spokane, that's why I have to get up so early. Yeah, because a lot of facilities over there that you need. Yeah. And then do you uh, take a break and then do you swim again later in that day? Yes, then I'll be swimming again um, in Coeur d'Alene from 3 o'clock until 4.30 in the afternoon. So it's, it consumes a lot of the day and then yes. your coach who's so gifted here was, she's instructing, you know, I assume there's time between the swimming and all when you just meet and go over um, uh, different techniques and so forth. Um, during the swimming workout someday we'll just dedicate days to working on our stroke and say backstroke and just perfecting the technique and sure. but we don't meet a lot outside of swimming. Janelle Burke. Mm -hmm. I want to start again with you Brooke and, and then I'll we'll go over to your coach and have her help us too with this. When you're going to prepare for a meet mm -hmm. you must have certain things that you go through. What, what kinds of 
uh, of a procedure would you go through in order to get ready for a meet? Um, it's not so important what you do right before the meet, but what you do all the time that you're training. I mean, you just have to be aware of what you're doing nutritionally and that kind of stuff all the time. Cause swimming is just never ending. Before the meet, um, mentally I kind of prepare myself. I have you know, a tendency to get really nervous. and Okay, that's I, the next thing yes. I wanted to ask about. How, how do you control that? Um, and, and I take it that's maybe on the way to the meet. Let's, let's say you're driving somewhere, to, like mm -hmm. to Yakima. Uh, during that process of going over there, is that when you start to begin to prepare mentally? Yes. Or um, is it when you get there? Mm -hmm. Well, I've, I've been in meets for so long. It used to be, you know, a week before I was already really excited and nervous, but now I'm not really nervous until I get there. And on the ride over, I guess I'm thinking about my races and how well I want to do and that kind of stuff. But I'm, I don't get nearly so excited for those smaller Inland Empire meets as I used to. The ones that really get me nervous are the ones on the national level. It's mm -hmm. really hard kind of battle with yourself. So. That's right. And, and how, do you, how do you prepare yourself when you hear that um, so-and-so who's a wonderful swimmer is going to be there and you're going to be competing against that person. Are you really competing against that person or are you competing against yourself? I, that's one of the things I try to do is just remember I'm trying to do a best time and do my best and it doesn't matter how I swim against others. Of course it is always nice to win but mm -hmm. and, <laughs> that can and always happen. If, if you do something and you know that you haven't done it exactly the way you wanted to do it, how do you keep your mind focused on continuing the race and not letting up? Uh, that is really difficult. I just have to, you know, say, I can't let it get me down. If I do that, I'm just going to have an even worse race, and I just have to think. Has know, that ever happened? Um, in some races on my turn or something, I'll make a really stupid mistake, but I just quickly kind of, you know, focus on what's ahead. And that's a, that's a very good good attitude to have now as a coach. How are you trying to prepare your, your uh, student to be able to, to uh, take care of these things? Because you've been through this yourself. You know how it feels to be there. And uh, what do you say? Well, I think the easy part is preparing the physical. And with someone at Brooks level, you prepare for the whole season to where when you're getting for, ready for a big meet, when kids are swimming so long and so hard, they really wear their body down. And then about two or three weeks before a really big meet, we will taper, they call it, and, and really let up on how much we're physically working out. Uh, take off the weights. Rick does a weight program and we'll stop that so that physically, by the time they go to a really big meet where she wants to her best, like Junior Nationals, physically she's really rested. And like I say, the physical part is the easy part. Uh, the mental part, that's hard, but that's one reason why Brooke is good, is she is very strong mentally. And she does keep controlled pretty well. I know she does get very nervous, but everyone gets nervous. Yes, that's right. And everyone's going there in top physical condition, so a lot of times it will be determined by mentally who can get up for the race and who can overcome, like you say, making a little mistake. And, and Brooke is very good at that. I've seen her do races where she will miss her turn and yet she can come back really strong at the end and, and overcome that. And that's uh, one of her assets is that she's, she's very strong mentally. Now are you pointing out to her too, uh, studying mm -hmm. the competition and studying Brooke, uh, what she has to do in order to win the race? Or is it more again that just, just do your best? It's more again time rather than going to, to win the race. Uh, at Junior Nationals qualifying there, there were 79 swimmers in the 50 free that were separated by six tenths of a second. So that's anybody's race. You know, if you do everything right, you're going to have a good race. So, no, I don't know there that we looked at so-and-so and so-and-so and so that we needed to beat. It's more the time. There's not a strategy, in other words. It's more of a matter of working toward uh, doing your best. Go ahead, Brooke. Yeah. Um well, there is, you are working to do your best, but you know, there are certain things that we do discuss. In order to do my best, I have to hit my turn and do my dive well and everything. 
Oh, okay. I'm going to have to interrupt because we certainly don't get through this program without showing some video. That's right. Uh, yeah. Our viewers would be upset after we promised them. Uh, we're going to ask our staff to put up the first meet uh, that you swam. Uh, and you can tell us, I think you were age 10 at this time. And yes. If they'll do it this time. Uh, I think I'll ask the coach, because uh, you're so modest and she can brag on you and you probably won't. I think <laughs> there were some time records broken in this. And uh, Coach Ken, if you would take us through this first swim, uh, what type of meat it is and what uh, Brooke does. If Our staff will run that at this time. Okay, this is age group regionals, which was held in Federal Way. And to quali you have to qualify to go to this meet. So these are the top swimmers in all of the Northwest. And Brooke is 10, and this is the backstroke. I believe, is she in lane four or five here? I believe it's... I think I'm five. You're five. five. So lane I play five. second in the preliminary. So the viewers can watch if they count their lane five. <laughs> Go ahead, Coach Ken. Okay. Now, uh, in this event, and she does, she gets a regional record, which means for 10-year-olds, she's the top swimmer in this region. And through this, when she was 10, she qualified in the top 16 in the nation. There is her time, and she's winning, right? has won this particular one. Right. When she was 10, she made top 16 in the nation in butterfly and backstroke. I believe in this freestyle. one, I believe this yes. one, Coach, she is going to be in lane four. Uh-huh. Is that right, Brooke? Yeah, that's me in lane four with the okay. CSFC cap on. Okay. Coach Ken, if you'll take us through this. Now, one. this is an individual medley where she swims one length of each stroke. And Brooke is very strong here because she has no weak stroke. And uh, watch here. Now she's in lane four in this one, I think. Yes, yes. I previewed now this. Now this is the butterfly. And uh -huh. see, she's strong here. She's in the lead right at the beginning. Yeah, I, I viewed that, and she's leading all the way through, isn't right. she? Right. And then she goes to backstroke, mm -hmm. which was the event she won in the race before. At this point, at 13, backstroke is probably her weakest stroke now. But as yes. you can see, everything, she's strong in every stroke. Here's breaststroke, and she's getting very strong in breaststroke. And she's gaining all the time. It shows she has endurance, too. Um, for the long events, like the 500 free, I'm not very good at those. I don't have a lot of endurance at the end of those really long ones. This is the freestyle, which which is her best race now is the 50 free, which was the one she swam at Junior Nationals. It's nice to have that last, because she is really moving there, isn't she? <laughs> and there we go to the time again. And, and again, she has won um, her race. So after all that we've been talking about and, and all the work you've done and all the endurance, it is so neat to see that that's the result. And before I go back to Janelle, I ask you, uh, Brooke, if you'd bring one of your mm -hmm. shirts. And I'm going to hold this up here for the camera if they want to. Come and tell us about your shirt and how the, what relationship this has to the Olympics. Oh, this was a shirt that I bought at the pre-Olympic trials. You can see it says no pain, no Spain. That was when the Olympics were in Barcelona. And this was a really big meet. This was still when I wasn't, I was a pretty good swimmer by then, but all these people to me were just <laughs> kind of up on a pedestal. And um, you oh, can and see some of the names, some of the names here. I don't know if your viewers that aren't familiar with swimming would know these names, but there's Mike Barrowman, who holds a world record in the 200 breast, and Anita Nall, who was the one you mentioned earlier that um, won Olympics when she was not, went to the Olympics when she was 14 years old. And there's Leanne Fetter, the first woman ever to break a 22 in the 50 yard freestyle. And Pablo Morales, who probably a lot of you have heard of for coming back and winning a second gold medal in the 100 fly, which he holds a world record in. There's also Bart Pippinger, who is a, an international swimmer, and he's from Idaho, so that was a really neat one to get. So this gives you a lot of inspiration as you yeah. uh, meet some of these people, and, and I'm sure you talk with them about um, what they've gone through. Yeah. Janelle Burke. Uh -huh. Well, Brooke, you've had some wonderful experiences, but before the program you were also saying that one of the things is that swimming is not only an individual sport, but it's also a team sport, and that your team is very important. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about why you like your team so much? What is it you do for each other? 
oh, we just support each other and and we cheer for each other at meets and stuff. And just nice to know that you have people behind you that you know are watching your race and they want you to do good just as much as you do. And it's just really nice to have so many people that you know care about how you swim and you feel the same way with them. And in practice, um, if you you know just have a really hard set. It's nice, and also um, a lot of them give me competition and practice. They help push me farther than I would go by myself. So. And I want to give your teacher an, uh, an opportunity to say if there are parents out there who have young people who would like to get started in a program and be able to excel like Brooke has done so well, um, how can they do this? What do you say to them? Well, we have a program um, but we start them at, at whatever level they're at. If they can swim the length of a 25-yard pool, we start them in what we had, call our pre-comp What What age? Program. Five? Oh, we have five. We have some five-year-olds in there. And uh, they go right from there. And then they progress. It just depends on, on how quickly they progress. We move them right on up until they're swimming in the workout that Brooke is swimming in. And if they want to, they can get in touch with a program that is a part. But you would you would recommend U.S. Swimming. Yes, and programs. the only U.S. swimming team in Coeur d'Alene is at Stay Fit. Um, they really have the only pool available that's a 25-yard regulation pool. So that is the only U.S. swimming program in Coeur d'Alene. And then once you, you enter this kind of a, a, a program, then you see where you're going to go with it, and that's all up to you, I take it. But the encouragement from parents and friends and family uh, and teachers, coaches, coaches yeah. are very... Uh, important. Mm -hmm. And Janelle, we must not forget about our wonderful viewers in Canada and Coach Kent. They also obviously have a program in Canada and they too uh, prepare for the Olympics and our viewers in Canada could contact. Uh, yeah, we have some Canadian teams that come down and swim in our meets here in the summer in Spokane. We've had several Canadian teams. And so throughout Western Canada where this program is, there's certainly in, in the different cities and communities uh, their organization. Um, yes. And they too yes. have a nationwide organization right. and have all these different events and, and age groups. I've just received the signal from our staff that we're out of time and on behalf of Janelle Burke and our staff we thank uh, Coach Carolyn Kent and swimmer Brooke Sprague. It's been fun to this program. In fact, after 23 years of doing this program, this is the first time we've done swimming, and I just can't believe we've waited 23 years. There are so many mm -hmm. subjects to cover, and we keep finding new topics from time to time. And Brooke, uh, really good luck to you, and Coach, congratulations, and we wish you the best, and we hope to see you in the Olympics someday, and have you to come <laughs> back as a champion on our program. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you've found this program really inspiring, and we would like to uh, encourage all of you uh, to engage in such activities as swimming, and invite you to be with us again next week at this same time when we will discuss what we believe to be an important issue. Until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. The North Idaho College Public Forum was videotaped live from the studios of instructional technology on the campus of North Idaho College for viewing at this more appropriate time. We invite you to join us again next week for another all-new edition of the North Idaho College Public Forum on this public television station.